now uh, i would like to introduce our next speaker professor monica sipakaya mashado she is a phd in political and economics law professor of constitutional law and gender at the brazilian c institute of public law she is also the author of book women's law higher education work in autonomy and the women's rights collection she will be presenting her work on precariousness and feminization of the labor market of lawyers a gender relationship we will be looking forward to your presentation professor monica and if you're ready can we please start hello everyone uh, my name is monica sapukaya machado i'm from brazil i'm here now it's uh, almost one o'clock in the morning uh, and but um, i decided to not um take my presentation so uh, i can try to talk to you all if you don't understand me because english is not my first language so i can explain myself uh, i'm working for the last 10 years uh, about women and um higher education um professions and especially in law i'm a lawyer too and today i want to talk to you about um uh, women lawyers and um improvement uh, something that happened here in brazil and i did a little bit um of research about the united states so i try to uh, show uh, both realities and so can think about um what's happening right now i don't know if you can um change the this presentation for me or we should change here can you do oh thank you oh this is to okay so um united states has 1 million 3 uh, 305 uh, 2027 lawyers in 2019 that means one lawyer for every 242 habitants Brazil uh, has a more impressive number they have 1 million and 198,000 and 12 lawyers in 2020 that means uh one lawyer for every 176 habitants that's a lot of lawyers and and that's why i chose this both countries because they are uh the largest country with uh the higher um, uh numbers of lawyer per capita um probably you're not seeing because it's like too big uh but uh what why uh these countries have so many lawyers uh, that's that's the question here and um let me uh tell you probably um uh the sea of lawyers justified among the other reasons the fact that they are countries of continental dimensions and federated extractors with different legal systems between states and diffuse justice system with state and federal court working different ways the brazilian constitution regulates the re the relation of justice bodies in a structured way while in us the constitution deals little with the state justice system leaving to the local law however what can be said is that both systems are complex and demand specialized and active legal operators so we have two um enormous countries with a lot of lawyers and a lot of lawyers per capita that's why we're talking about this um, both countries so let's talk a little bit about women lawyers in the united states now um uh, the american bar association show us that they have 36% of lawyers are women in 2019 in 2009 this number was 31% in 2000 with 27% but since 2002 women are half of the law students they were 49% in 2002 50% in 2014 50.3% in 2016 and last year they were 52.4% so there are majority of law students but they still not uh, half of the lawyers They, they are only 33% of the spring court and they have only 27% of women are federal judges and the first woman uh, that was federal judge was judge was in 1928 that means almost 100 years ago they had the first federal judge as a woman and 
now they can get 30% of uh, women in federal, as a federal judge. But that, we're not talking about this here, we talk about money. Women lawyers in the United States earn 20% less than men. Women remain about 20% of the all equally partners in female general, general councils of Fortune 500 companies, only 30% male. So women um, lawyers in the United States, they earn less than men and they still earning less than men. What is uh, the US lawyers wage? That's um, what I want, I want to understand. That's what I'm studying is um, the median earning of a lawyer in the United States um, last year was $122,000. The average a lawyer's salary was $144,000 a year. That means that the, the top lawyers, the rich and powerful, the television Hollywood lawyers that we all see in the movies, they earn a lot more than their colleagues because the average lawyer is $22,000 thousand dollars more than the median earnings. Okay, but the first year law firm associated normally earns $155,000 a year. But the first year lawyer in the public service earns something between forty-eight to $58,000 a year. That means one third of the uh, first year law firm associated. The, average of the first year law associate. That means being a public lawyer in the United States means that you receive a lot less than being a private practice lawyer. And why we talk about this uh, regarding to women, let's understand something a little bit. Um, the average lawyer wage um, increased a lot in the last um, 20 years. The accumulated inflation between 1997 and 2018 was 58%, but the accumulated wage growth was 98% for lawyers. So lawyers, the last 20 years, they're earning more. The value is up. It's a good thing being a lawyer in the United States for the last 20 years. Okay. Uh, and the median salary for the first year law firm associate rose $20,000, something between 15% from 2017 to 2019. And that means for the last, the last two years, they got $20,000 more. And 31% uh, is the salary grow after eight years in the law firm. So someone with eight years of law uh, normally earns something like $204,000 a year, a lot of money. Okay, but in public servers, that's not what's happening. Public servers for the last, since 2004, 2018, it's uh, something like 40% of increase for this, the last 14 years. And the accumulated inflation for the same period is something like 36%. So for the last 14 years, uh, the salary of entry level for public service lawyers did increase almost anything. They still receiving the same thing in the United States. So where are the women lawyers walking out the door? The uh, Bar Association did a research about this just right now. Uh, why? Career study, women and men of Harvard Law School. We don't have a data uh, for all public uh, service uh, United States, law in the United States, but we have this uh, work for Harvard Law School. They show the class of 1975, class of 1985, 95, 2000 are now, these women are now in public service. 50 5% of the class of 25, of 75 is now in public service. 46% uh, of class of 85 now in public service. Uh, 37 of uh, 95 are in public service and then grow again for 47% of the class of 2000 are in public service. They didn't begin in public service. They begin in the private service almost 
all of them, but then they all went to public service. We all know because it's easier uh, sometimes to accommodate uh, home life and work life and all the other problems that women deal with when working uh, and uh, working outside home. We all know what um, we need to lead. But what I want to show is that that means that where uh, women are in public service, in public service are losing their value. Um, being a lawyer in the United States is still an economically advantageous profession, and perhaps that's why it has remained in the hands of men, regardless in the niche of the women majority, the devaluation is notable. That means uh, law is not uh, a feminized profession yet in the United States, but where women are the majority, they still earn less and the profession is losing value. Brazilian lawyers are a little bit different. Brazilian Bar Association in 2020, women are 49% of the lawyers, but they are 65% almost of lawyers up to 25 years old and 55% of lawyers up to 40 years old. Law students, women are 55% of law students, but still earn 35% less than men. And we have only 18 women in Supreme Court and never were a president of the National Bar Association, Brazilian National Bar Association. But in Brazil, uh, uh, women are the majority of lawyers uh, working right now. But being a lawyer in Brazil is not very good. Uh, lawyers wage in Brazil, the median earnings is uh, $12,000 a year. It's less than the average self of economics or the engineer, that's 17,000 and 20,000. Um, lawyers are out of the list of professions with higher education who have seen a real increase, increase of earnings since 2009, and 30% of law firms created between 2008 and 2018 in Sao Paulo, the biggest city of uh, Brazil, with more than two, uh, 20 million people have closed their activities in the last 10 years. So. Uh, the, being a liar in Brazil right now doesn't mean have enough uh, money. Uh, that's something that we need to understand. And uh, law schools are in the middle of this problem. The winner, Brazil has more than 1,600 law schools. Um, academics uh, understand that Brazil has more law schools than all the other countries together. So law is the course that has the most student enrolled. Some, in 2017, we have almost 900,000 students uh, in law schools and 55% were women. Uh, law is the second course with the most significant numbers of vacancies, accounting for more than 10% of all university vacancies in the country. So if you want to be a law student in Brazil, it's easy. You have a lot of schools, not all of them are good schools, but they have a lot of schools. It's easy to get in, easy to study law. And so when women had the chance to go to university and uh, law schools started to open and they started to go to law school and that's it's not, doing very good for us. In 1990, we used to have 200 law schools. In 2020, we have 1,600 law schools. That means eight times in 30 years. And that's a lot of schools. And uh, that's creating a problem And over here. The data show that in Brazil, studying law and practicing law is not in the process of feminization, but has been feminized with women being the most significant number of law students and lawyers, especially in the beginning of their career. The expansion of law schools and lawyers is related to the country opening and the implementation of neoliberal economic program, which busted the privatization of public companies and demanded a legal shop floor. Brazil has an impressive number of lawsuits. 
the sum of case waiting decisions with new cases amount to 100 million lawsuits. Because of the increase of demand, the legal market included women, but at the same time, precariousness the profession. That means um, when women are the majority, we uh, lost uh, the value, the, the profession is losing value. So and that's something that I'm studying right now here in Brazil, try to understand what we can do now with the internet and the uh, artificial intelligence in law. That's something that we're gonna need to understand. So that's the paper that I'm writing right now and I want to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Monica. That was a great presentation. So if you have any questions, do we please send to me in the chat box? Meanwhile, uh, Professor, I just had this one question while I was listening to your presentation. Um, like you said, there are a huge number of law schools and huge number of law students and the profession is now being feminized. So that you believe might be one of the reasons from what I gathered, but uh, I still am not able to hold my hand as to why law is not exactly a very, uh, a profession that's bringing a huge monetary gain because as we perceive it in my country, especially when we are being told to go and study law because law is one of those professions. And there's this one common phrase which is used that anyone will pay you any amount just to save themselves. So law therefore has to be one of the professions where you earn probably the most, more than at one side doctors or engineers, but lawyer, no, nothing's greater than one's life. So if you could just uh, throw some light onto that. Meanwhile, we can wait for the other questions. I understand, I think you're right, but that's not uh, how things are organizing here in Brazil. I think we have a bureaucracy over here that's very uh, peculiar. Uh, we have um, more than 5,000 um, cities and they have their own laws. Um, and we have um, um, a way of doing things that you need a lot of um, uh, law information to do your normal things in life. So um, we create this amount um, uh, great numbers of people who went to law schools and law schools is uh, cheaper to do a law school than a medical school or an engineer school because you need labs and you need uh, um, more space and a lot you just need a teacher in a, in a classroom. So uh, in here in Brazil and the same in the United States, the higher education uh, it's private. We have public education, but it's, it's less than uh, the private education. So it's uh, cheaper to do a law school. And the government allowed in the beginning of the uh, 1990s uh, for um, um, for uh, uh, the market to do a law school everywhere in the country, a lot is a big country, so they do. And now we have a lot of people who went to law school, didn't have the greatest um, uh, uh, law experience because the, they don't have enough teachers, they have enough books, they have enough, enough uh, space to do this. And they're not great lawyers, or sometimes they are, but they have the, uh, great opportunities. And, and women are in the middle of this problem right now, and we don't know what's going to happen. Thank you, Professor. We have another question from Professor Melissa. She says, I just wanted to hear more about the extreme growth of law schools. And uh, you showed that from 200 something to 1600 law schools, according to the facts you showed. So she wants uh, just to hear more about it as the growth was huge. So if you can just throw more light on that. Sure, that's the, that's the problem. Um, when Brazil opened um, uh, after the dictatorship the uh, last 30 years here, and, and they started to open the country. And after that, they started the uh, new liberal uh, economic situation. Uh, the, uh, uh, the higher education become a, a very good uh, business. 
So the government allowed uh, to create new schools everywhere. So they started creating new schools and new schools and, um, and open classrooms and allowing everybody to go to school. And BLR until that time was a very respectful profession and was very um, good uh, to be alive. And more than that, we have like a test here that we need to do to go to, um, to university, like another, other countries have too, have to do a test. And women um, couldn't do all the tests in the, in the past. They couldn't do normally something that was related to becoming a teacher. And one of the first uh, professions that were allowed to uh, use your um, uh, high school education when you were a woman and you were studying to be a teacher was to go to law school. That's one of the, the main reasons why women started to go to law school before they went to all the other professions. But the funny thing is that um, women are the majority of uh, doctors here right now too, um, and, but that didn't happen the same thing that happened with, um, with lawyers. Lawyers now are, uh, they are not uh, middle class anymore. Being a lawyer here, maybe you are, you are I don't know, um, the beginning of middle class, okay? They, the same thing as that as someone who worked in a factory almost the same thing of uh, someone with, in the industry, like a car industry, something like that. So that's the problem. We have a lot of law schools. Not all of them are good schools, but we have a lot of law schools. It's very easy for someone to go to law school, uh, but that don't mean they have a profession after that. So that's it. Uh, we're not here. Yeah, uh, I, I was saying the thank you. I hope uh, you answered Melissa's query. And uh, we still have two minutes if there's anyone who wants to send in any questions or if Monica, you want to go ahead and conclude anything, we have two minutes in hand. Um, Professor I Melissa says, want... yes, you've answered her query well. So thank you, she thanks you. <laughs> Uh, I just want to thank you for the opportunity and say that um, uh, law is changing and uh, teaching law is going to be very different uh, the next five or ten years and we need to be prepared for this new new world and uh, I think it's great that we can exchange experience from all other countries in the world so um, that's it and hope to hear from all of you so bye. Thank you so much. I think we can move on to our next presentation now. Um...